Here's a quick video of a two meter broadband Yagi antenna that can be reproduced uh, reliably and it's portable. So ignore the angle, it's kind of down. So what we've got is eight gauge elements, eight gauge copper wire, and then just a one by four that I cut down and I wanted to have something wider than a one by two for the elements to support them. And a simple choke of ballon. And for the driven element, what I did was I drilled in and then used a Dremel to line up because what I all these are in line now. But I had to drill in here and then for the driven element I just used uh, ring terminals. And I've been looking at this for a long time, but having a hard time deciding on whether to do gain or go for a broadband. And I ran across an article recently, and with this pandemic and having time, I just decided to use materials that I have on hand. And here's how it can be reproducible. There's a great article that I did not print out, but I wrote by Seabick. He is, he's got, he's uh, silent key, but he's made a bunch of articles. And one of them is the plans for either a high gain or a high front to back ratio or a broadband. I chose the broadband. W4RNL, it's on on5au.be stroke content stroke AO stroke AO1.html. And or you can search a Yagi case study part one, design options. And so, again, this is 50 ohms for two meters. You can use different element lengths, uh, widths though. I used 1 8 copper. I think uh, aluminum tubing would probably actually be better because this will bend and you have to straighten it back out. There's a 26 inch spacing, spacing between the reflector and the director. Here's the design on his site. If you go to his site, it has all this information. It's fantastic. But the total reflector is 105.66 centimeters. I convert it to centimeters. I think it's easier to work with. And the driven element is 48.844 each element, and the director is 87.63. Now, what I actually ended up with, when because I use those ring terminals, and so I think that threw it off a little bit, and then maybe the hardware, what I ended up I cut the reflector back after doing the driven element. The driven element is 47.7 each, so 95.4 centimeters total. I left the director alone. The reflector, I cut down by one centimeter each side, so 103.66. Again, it's all just straight. Uh, the only one, the only element that's cut is the driven. The other, the director and the reflector are just um, all one piece. It's supposed to have 7 dB gain. Again, this isn't the high gain. Front to back ratio of 19.9. I have tested that. And it, it does work. I can't say it's 19.9, but there definitely is a front to back ratio. The beam width, the 3 dB bandwidth, or beam width, I should say, is like 60 degrees horizontal azimuth and about 120 degrees vertical. So it's got a lot of up and down. Um, what I did with the choke ballon, I wasn't. I, I typically use uh, ferrites, but Steve, this G3 TXQ, he's also a uh, silent key, but he has an excellent website. I think it's Karina.net. That's just from memory. Now, I've used his for making uh, ferrites and using ferrites, but three turns. He, I saw he had commented on a, a site. Three turns of RG58 wound one and a half inch internal diameter resonance at two meters. He said that's good enough. If you do anything radically different, either in the turns or the turn diameter, um, the, the choking impedance isn't great. So that's where we stand. What I ended up with on SWR, one thing to keep note of is to watch this. Watch your uh, coax. If you get too close to here, you're gonna have big problems. And I had some problems because that was an extra 
jumper cable. I knew there was a problem in it. I thought I'd taken care of the side with the problem and cut it off, but I was still getting a, a lot of variability and I realized it was the, the other side of the coax as well. So I cut it off. So that's a lot shorter than it used to be. But if you keep this too close, it's going to act like the reflector and your, uh, your impedance is going to drop significantly. I saw uh, like a 30, 30 ohm impedance and I thought this is not right and I realized that this coax was acting like the reflector. The, the great distance, the greater distance between these two is what increases the impedance over what a Yagi typically would be. So it's, uh, I've done some testing on it just with repeaters around and it uh, seems pretty good but if you go to that website you ought to be able to reproduce this and do it on your own. Uh, that's one of the problems I've had with a lot of the designs, it'll either use a different material in terms of the elements. If the elements are large enough, it shouldn't matter what you're using within reason. Um, and as I understand it, this 1 8 inch is about the minimum uh, that it doesn't matter what else you're using. So copper or aluminum. But otherwise, um, I just had to cut down the driven element so it's shorter than it was uh, designed at and the reflector just a little bit. But otherwise, it seems like a great antenna. And the reason I like this is, uh, this is kind of my design. You can probably come up with something better. This is just what I had in stock. But this is reproducible in terms of I can reproduce my SWR and performance uh, when I'm out in the field. I want to be able to take this on mountains for soda activations. And so that's the problem I had with a lot of designs is they're not really, they don't facilitate that. Oh, well, I think about it. We had two swarms in our tree. I don't know if you can see this. That's a swarm of bees right there. It's uh, Easter 2020 and about the time when bees are swarming. So anyway, that's the two meter antenna. I may do a quick video on the other two and just talk about Yagi's in general because it seems like there's a lot of misunderstanding as to Yagi's. You're not going to get high gain and uh, broadband. It's just not going to happen. So. Anyway, if you've got some different ideas, I'd be interested in seeing your comments, but this is about what I thought would be good for a, a portable, truly portable operation.